tonight, Denver prosecutors are celebrating what they consider a historic win. A human trafficking trial ended today with a guilty verdict on almost 20 counts. The prosecutors say this could result in the longest sentence ever for a human trafficking case in the U.S. Here's Denver 7's Colette Bordelon. These are the types of cases that happen sort of in the shadows. But on Tuesday in a Denver courthouse. These are people who prey on victims who typically don't come forward to law enforcement. Survivors and prosecutors believe they illuminated the issue. How are you feeling today? Tired. <laughs> It's been a really long month and we've been working on this case for many, many months. Chief Deputy District Attorney Laura Mullen was the lead prosecutor on a three week trial against Robert Hawkins, a case where charges span from 2018 to 2021 and include four counts of human trafficking, one of which is related to a minor. I wasn't going to walk away from this case until it was done. Mullen says there were a handful of victims in the case, which was first brought to her attention in 2019. I think it's a tremendously significant case. I mean, we could end up with the longest human trafficking sentence in the country's history. On Tuesday, the jury returned a guilty verdict. Depending on a variety of factors, Mullen expects a sentence of more than 400 years. The fact that the jury found him guilty of 18 counts speaks volumes about, one, the fact that they um, were educated a little bit more about this crime. An arrest affidavit says one victim described Hawkins as her, quote, master. In human trafficking, the proper word is trauma bonding. It's like a form of Stockholm syndrome. In this case, when they found victims who had substance abuse or maybe didn't have a place to go or maybe were on the run because they were children and all of these other array of reasons that doesn't give an excuse to an abuser or a trafficker to exploit them, but that's exactly what he did. Janelle Goodrich was appointed to this case five years ago and has helped victims through the process. It happens to be Women's History Month still, and this case was brought forward by women investigated by women, advocated by women, and prosecuted by women. Through Goodrich, some victims gave us statements. One of them says in part, I can finally say I'm free. I am so happy we won. <laughs> And I'm so happy that they were believed. And I'm so happy that we're here. The defendant is set to be sentenced in June. Club Bordelon, Denver 7. And we requested an interview or statement from the defense attorney, but have not heard back. Taking a closer look, Colorado lawmakers are taking steps to crack down on human traffickers. Senate Bill 35 proposes extending the statute of limitations on adult human trafficking charges from three to 20 years. And that would give victims more time to come forward and prosecutors more time to pursue charges. It would also create mandatory minimum prison sentences for those convicted. The bill passed out of the House yesterday and now goes back to the Senate. For Developing now an incredibly lengthy sentence handed down in the last hour and a half in multiple human trafficking cases. The victims of this man, Robert Hawkins, detailing the horror they went through before a judge delivered that sentence. That'll take multiple lifetimes to fulfill. Fox 31's Nicole Fierro joins us live at the courthouse with this historic sentence. Nicole. Yeah, 448 years. Robert Hawkins is now facing and the head prosecutor says that she believes this is the longest human trafficking sentence in U.S. history. The longest one before this also out of Colorado. That was 401 years. News victims tell us they're happy that they faced their fears. They testified and spoke to be a part of this history. Now, 448 years came out of more than a dozen counts against Hawkins in three cases that covered seven victims, four adult women, two juvenile girls, and one man. We heard from them, the 13-year-old girl who said Hawkins was 40 when she was manipulated by him. She is 17 today. The lifelong sentence these victims say they face every day after the trauma of sex trafficking and human trafficking under Hawkins. Now, with each count, prosecution read a victim's name it was connected to. Prosecution also pointed to a note in the pre-sentencing investigation report. It did say between 1997 and 2003, Hawkins was arrested, cited or detained for 57 offenses in 20 plus cases. They were all dismissed. They also said he got probation in 2012 when charged with pimping of a child back then because that 16 year old in that case was too afraid to speak. Now we didn't hear from Hawkins himself. His attorney said he advised him not to speak because they plan to appeal. His attorney also said defense victims um, the defense attorney said that victims were sanitized and made to be pure victims in this trial and that the truth is a lot more grayer. Now let's hear from one of the victims herself and a juror in this case that went 15 days long. The juror is going to speak first. The weight of it, 
knowing that so many people had experienced such trauma and such over such long periods of time, it was really just difficult to hear those testimonies and those stories. It feels great. Um, I, I just want other women, children, men, kids. It's not just women, and it's not just um, men that sex traffic people. It's also women, and I just want whoever is a victim to come forward, and it's okay. It's okay to come forward and get justice that they deserve. That victim tells us the first time in years tonight she believes she is going to sleep well tonight, that it was scary seeing him in court again. Now also, this ended right around 4 o'clock, immediately after we spoke to the juror, the victim. Then we went right into a press conference with the DA, the FBI, Denver police. They say that they hope this historical sentence sends a message that human trafficking will not be tolerated in this community and will be aggressively prosecuted. We'll hear a lot more from them coming up tonight. Reporting live here in Denver, Nicole Fierro, Fox. Dozens of victims involved in human trafficking have been rescued from some pretty dangerous conditions all in Colorado. Tonight, what the FBI did here in our state under the sweeping sting Operation Cross Country. Good evening, I'm Bart Bedsold. Heather Skold has the night off. More than two dozen human trafficking victims from Colorado are safe tonight. That includes eight children that federal agents believe were exploited by drug dealers across the state. The goal, to put a dent in a cross-country problem targeting vulnerable people for profit. Investigative reporter Sean Rice is live in our studio tonight with more on the sweeping operation. Sean? Yeah, a two-day undercover operation in July rescued 27 victims of human trafficking who the FBI says were targeted through manipulation. Through the help of local agencies like Colorado Springs Police and the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, FBI Denver says this annual crackdown brought multiple criminal enterprises to their knees. Human trafficking and especially sex trafficking for children is a persistent and particularly destructive threat that causes unthinkable harm to the most vulnerable members of our society. FBI Special Agent Mark McCulloch says a two-day mission in July called Operation Cross Country helped bring more than two dozen human trafficking victims back home to Colorado. McCulloch's team, along with 40 local law enforcement teams across the state, used surveillance techniques to arrest five people for crimes tied to trafficking young children for sex. This isn't a kidnap off the street scenario that you might see in a movie. What we see is sex traffickers identifying vulnerable minors and exploiting them through different methods of psychological or physical control. The FBI says the victims were targeted by low-level drug dealers who are resorting to selling people for more money than can be acquired in the sale of illegal drugs. Federal agents are now urging the public to be aware that these crimes are more prevalent than you might think. I don't think it's on people's radar. It doesn't happen here. It happens in certain neighborhoods, or that's something you just see in the, in the movies. And as we've demonstrated, that is, that is not the case. All of those rescued victims have been given numerous resources to recover, including food and clothing, medical help, or even temporary shelter if they need it. Reporting in the studio, Sean Rice, 13 investigators. Our kids are being trafficked right here in our backyards. Here are the stats. Over two days in July, FBI Denver recovered eight kids and 19 adult victims of sex trafficking. And this problem is here. It surpasses all demographics. Um, it is across the board, and so it is something that parents um, should have on their radar. They call it Operation Cross Country 13, which also located 14 children and resulted in five arrests. Mark McCulloch, the FBI Denver special agent in charge, says the crime doesn't happen like people think. And there's a misperception, I think, in the, in the community that these are victims that were abducted off the street. Instead of a snatching, he says victims come from vulnerable situations, like a child who is homeless or has abusive parents. A Denver police lieutenant says traffickers look for these kids to exploit. The traffickers often find that providing drugs, food, and shelter is a successful means to manipulating their victims. Once in their grasp, Lieutenant Aaron Reberterano says traffickers try to find ways to hold on to the victims. And then offer them to other individuals, associates, for sexual acts. He says many of the traffickers are lower level drug dealers or gang members. That have figured out that selling a human being for sex acts is more lucrative than selling narcotics. The FBI would not give names or share details of the five people arrested. 
But additionally, a spokesperson says agents and local law enforcement are continuing to investigate eight other suspects. It really is a marathon. It isn't a sprint when it comes to these cases. In Denver, Aaron Adelson, 9 News. Good evening, I'm Kyle Clark. And I'm Jennifer Meckles. 448 years. That is the sentence a judge handed down today for a man convicted of human trafficking. The prosecutors think that Robert Hawkins' punishment is the longest human trafficking sentence in American history. Nine News reporter Rachel Krauss joins us after being in the courtroom today as he learned his punishment. Rachel? And yeah, it was an emotional moment for a lot of the victims and their families. But before even that, victims had the chance to speak to Hawkins in the court. One victim says she was just 13 years old when she became one of his victims, saying he's the villain of my childhood, describing him as a scary large monster that she still hasn't recovered from. Inside the courtroom, many of Robert Hawkins' victims sat, listening as the sentence was read out. 448 years for human trafficking six victims. After court let out, we spoke with one. We're not identifying her at her request. I was happy he got found guilty. The sentence, I was like, I don't know any of these words that are going on, but after the end of it, 400, over 400 years, I'm like, yes. Nearby sat jurors that voted to convict Hawkins on 18 counts. Absolutely. Including juror eight, who asked us not to share her name. It meant a lot to be part of that and know that we got to see justice to today and on that day. For 15 days, she heard evidence and testimony from victims that Hawkins had forced women, men, even kids into prostitution, beating them if they ever tried to leave or even made him mad. They were heartbreaking. They're really hard to hear and they're going to carry this with for the rest of their lives and knowing that this person isn't going to be able to cause harm to anybody else is huge. The victim we spoke with says she still carries the fear and trauma every day. She says she never expected to face her monster years after she got away. But now, comforted that today it's him going away for good. I'm happy. Just glad, relieved. So now I'm going to go home and just pray and just thank God for this beautiful outcome. Hawkins' attorney declined to speak with us after today's sentencing. In the courtroom, they told the judge Hawkins didn't want to make any statement. And even before the victim's statements or the sentence was handed down, they told the judge they'd be filing an appeal in the case. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back. Another episode of Green Lake Gang TV. I uh, appreciate you guys checking out the channel. We're going to be switching it up today. We're going to be going to Denver, Colorado. Uh, about a case that pretty much just got wrapped up a few weeks ago. We're going to be covering a guy uh, by the name of Robert Hawkins out of Denver, uh, Colorado. He was convicted of human trafficking on a huge scale. And on June 8th, 2024, was given what many believe to be the longest sentence ever given to somebody in this country, uh, for human trafficking. And interestingly enough, um, the two longest sentences given for human trafficking have actually come out of the state of Colorado. So anyway, Robert Hawkins was given 448 years behind bars. Yes, 448. So basically, you're just going to round that up to 500 years almost. Um, and it said that it technically was the second longest at first, but the, the one that was ahead of it had gotten adjusted down to like 401. So Robert Hawkins, yes, given 448 years for human trafficking. Um, as bad as it gets, as bad as it gets. I got to be real careful with what I can say on here, but... Um, he was tried three separate but related cases, crimes that occurred between 2018 and 2021. Prosecutors showed that Hawkins used violence and threats to keep his victims basically subservient to him. Four victims were identified as adult women. Two were identified as minor children. And also, this is kind of where a little bit more violence comes in. Uh, for those of you that think you can sneak around and maybe do this and find women to have on the side. One was a man who was a customer who got into it with Hawkins and Hawkins shot him in the leg. 
And yeah, so you know, this guy was this guy was a monster, man. Uh, quote: Like most human traffickers, Robert Hawkins showed no regard for anybody but himself, taking advantage of six extremely vulnerable victims. Denver DA Beth McCann said in a press release, "This sentence should send the message that human trafficking of any kind will not be allowed in any way in Denver, Colorado, and that those convicted of the crime will pay a significant price for it." Um, one victim described Hawkins as her quote master and said the girls he controlled had to serve him quote by doing things, making him meals and making him money. Just crazy by performing certain acts. The girls were required to make a minimum of $500 per day. They were also required to make a $5,000 quota to gain Hawkins trust. This quota was intended to help pay for a fake ID, a fake birth certificate in order for the girls to travel and work in different states. Uh, Prosecutors say Hawkins used a popular online escort ad website to advertise uh, his workers with listings in Denver and Los Angeles. Now, the number one cities for basically human trafficking are Houston, uh, Los Angeles, California, and Houston, Texas. If you didn't know. Um, an adult victim came forward in December of 19 and basically that prompted a two year long investigation. So a search warrant was issued, issued in October of 2021. He was finally arrested in November of 2021 during the sentencing hearing, a defense attorney pushed. So his defense attorney, which he did his job, right? And this is kind of one of those cases where it's like (laughs) very hard to defend. Okay. But Again, I've talked about this in other videos. This is why I love our, and and it really is. This is why I love our criminal justice system because everybody, and not saying Robert, Robert Hawkins is a bad dude on the worst levels. Okay, I'll just say it. Um, but, but you have got to have that person continue to maintain their rights, um, no matter what. His defense attorney pushed for forty years behind bars. <laughs> And I'm just like, yeah, he pushed for 40 and he got 440, basically. It's like, oh, my God, 448 years. You can tell they were sending a message with that with that, um, with that, that number. And, and I mean, imagine Robert Hawkins. He knew it was coming. I mean, it just, it's just crazy. So the defense attorney asked for 40, which this is – now, this is crazy. Listen to this. The prosecutors had initially offered this to him during plea negotiations, but prosecutors pushed back, noting the plea was offered to stop the victims from being re-traumatized by having to go th- not go through the trial. But Hawkins turned their plea deal down. So yes, Robert Hawkins was offered 40 years, which, yes, that's 40 years. Okay, that's a long time. But my God... He just got 448 years. Oh, and we were talking about him being initially the second one, but then became the top sentence ever. So the top one was actually only a few years ago. In 2017, a guy by the name of Brock Franklin was sentenced to 472 years in prison by Arapahoe County Judge Peter F. Michelson for exploitation, uh, pimping, pandering, all that. Later, an appellate court reduced his sentence to 401 years by it's like, can you imagine having an appeal? Okay, you're going from 470 to 401. It's like, what's it even matter? But when I read that Robert Hawkins turned down 40 years, because he's 44 at the time of his conviction. So 40 years. I mean, yeah, right? that's basically, but at least at 40 years, if you get some good time, maybe some laws change, at least you have a chance to maybe get out, especially the kind of crimes. It's like, what are you, I will say that, what are you thinking you're going to fight? I mean, my God, I just, and, uh, and I'm reading here, I think maybe he was sentenced actually on June 6th. Um, so I don't want to be completely wrong on that. It's either June 6th or June 8th, but, um, man, the judge in the case, Candace Garrett sentenced Robert Hawkins, 40, 40 years in prison. It's believed to be the longest sentence ever given to a convicted human trafficker in United States history. Um, he was convicted in March. A jury convicted Hawkins on 18 counts, five of which involved human trafficking. He exported four adult, two juveniles. 
preying on their victims' vulnerabilities, using physical violence and threats to keep the victims under his control and profiting from the sale of those individuals. Um, also shot a, what you would call a John, um, shot him in the leg. Robert Hawkins showed no regard for anybody but himself, taking advantage of six extremely vulnerable victims. Man. And this became a federal case. The FBI worked with the Denver Police Department. Just absolutely crazy. I can't believe he took this to trial. Oh my God. All the people they had. Uh, Hawkins did not speak at his own sentencing hearing. His attorney said he advised him not to speak because they planned to appeal. And the attorney did say he doubted the severity of how prosecutors painted the victims in this case. I just, I don't see how you win. I don't see how you can do this. And I will talk briefly about his past. And this is why it's just like, why would, if, if I'm, if I'm Hawkins and if his attorney did not basically say, Robert, we have an offer for 40 years. You have a really bad criminal history. These charges you're facing are really bad. You need to take this. You know, I'm going to read this to you guys really quick. Prosecutors pointed to a pre-sensing investigation report that said Hawkins was arrested, cited, or detained for 57 offenses in more than 20 cases that were dismissed between 1997 and 2003. They also said he was placed on probation in 2012 when charged with pimping. But he managed to kind of get out of that because the victim in that case was too afraid to speak. So I have a feeling, you know, reading that part, maybe that makes a little bit more sense that he thought, well, he kind of got away with it once. Maybe that person or these persons will be too afraid to testify or his defense attorney could pick them apart. Maybe they, you know, because unfortunately a lot of people involved in these human trafficking cases, they are sometimes have criminal records themselves. They have drug problems. They disappear. They're hard to locate. Um, you know, two year long investigation, people disappear, especially if you're dealing with people in the streets, you know, uh, and that's sad, right? Uh, women get paid off. They, like I said, they disappear. If they have drug problems, they end up five States away or they're a few, they refuse to testify. They're afraid to testify. If they're going to remain in that life, they don't want to be known as a cooperator. There's all kinds of things. One of the victims, Gail Ross wrote in a statement to the judge that she was trying to get back home to California when she met Robert Hawkins. Hawkins then told her she had nothing left to do but work for him, took her and forced her to work for him 12 hours a day. Gail Ross, quote, said, people probably ask why I didn't just run away, Ross said in a letter. It was made very clear to me by <clears throat> Hawkins and his associates and those he associated with that he isn't one to mess with. All the victims noted physical abuse during the hearing. This, this talks about it again. The defense was offered a 40-year sentence as part of a plea deal. They called it a gift, and Hawkins ultimately denied the deal and took the three cases to trial. I'm sorry, but that's just not smart. The trial lasted 15 days, ended on March 26th. Hawkins was convicted on 18 charges, three counts of human trafficking, SA uh, on multiple people, assault in the first degree, Multiple instances, 18 to 21. My God, yeah. And finally, it says in the current case, the victims were not afraid to speak out against the man. Multiple people, including the victims and parents, spoke during the sentencing hearing. I may not have had a perfect childhood, but the worst time of it would always be what he did to me, a victim uh, using an alias said. Quote, maybe 500 years will make the light bulb go off in his head that he is in fact not in the right, not in charge, not allowed to treat other humans as he does. End quote. Hawkins sat emotionless in the courtroom. While Hawkins did have family or friends in the courtroom, they didn't speak during the hearing either. I came forward. This is another victim. Her name was Willissa Stanton. I came forward not because I wanted to be vengeful or angry, but because there were juveniles who needed to have a voice for them. No man should have the right to do what he did. For the rest of their lives, they're going to have to fight this too. <laughs> it says that although he was sentenced to 48, 40, 448 years overall, he was actually sentenced to more than 700 years, but the judge ordered some sentence to be served concurrently. At that point, it doesn't even matter. 
So anyway, there you guys have it. Wanted to do a uh, a quick story on this. Like I said, guys, I like to do stuff that interests me. Change it up. Please keep up the views. Please, please keep up the subscribers. It means a lot to me. Until next time, see you later.